back to room 237 as I continue my marathon of Italian horror and giallo films. And this is one that I've had for a little while, haven't got around to it, mainly because I, I didn't really know what to expect, so I was kind of putting it off till the right time, I guess. I still don't know what to make of this film. This is without a doubt so far. This has got to be the craziest, most nonsensical, sleaziest, exploitive jello I've seen yet. I still have to see Play Motel, which I'll be getting soon, and Jello in Venice, if I could ever find a cheap enough copy. But this is 1972's uh, Delirium, which of course, this is the third movie with that title. There's, uh, of course, Lamberto Bava's Delirium from, I think, 87. There's a Blumhouse film with Topher Grace that I reviewed from 2018. This is from 72, and there's another Delirium from 1979, which is a uh, video nasty. Uh, but this one is written and directed by Renato Pulse Pulselli, who's a uh, notorious uh, exploitation filmmaker. Uh, except it was, uh, he's credited as Ralph Brown. And it stars uh, um, Mickey. Mickey Har Hargate. I don't know why that was so hard to say. <laughs> Rita Calderoni, Raul, Tato Cimarosa, Krista Barrymore, and Carmen Young. And the music was by Gianfranco Reverberry. Uh, I'm just gonna look up what some of those names are. Um, I can't even click on the cast, so that's great. But Rita Calderoni, she kind of had a... Oh, she was also in a, a Quiet Place in the Country, which I'll be getting. Uh, she she had kind of a Barbara Steele kind of performance going. She did a lot like with her eyes and going crazy. And... This is, of course, the Blue Underground release, and this comes with the American and International release. Now, normally that's not much of a big deal. Normally that might mean, okay, you could change the audio. Maybe there's a little more blood or sex or whatever. This, to my understanding, is almost two entirely different movies. I mean, the International version is... Uh, 16 minutes longer uh, apparently the American version cut out a lot of the more hardcore stuff but has more violence more kills even rearranges some of the scenes extends or cuts some of the scenes cha changes the music so even changes like in this uh uh, Hargaday's character it is impotent, whereas in the American version, he has PTSD. So it's almost an entirely different film. So maybe at some point I'll I'll get to the American one. But for right now, I'm good with watching the Italian one. And it, can I put this on my worst list? I don't know because I don't know what to make of this film. This is. I think as close to sexploitation as I've seen in a giallo yet. I mean, the story alone is that there's a criminal psychologist named Dr. Herbert Liutik, if I pronounced that correctly, who's played by ha uh, Hargaday. He was a bloody pit of horror. But he's also a deranged sex maniac who, serial killer of women, like he's, it implies that like when he looks at women, he gets so turned on that he just has to kill them. Like that's his arousal. He has 
a young wife whose name is uh, Bartzia, played by Calderoni. Uh, and she has visions of orgies, of medieval torture devices. It implies that she's still a virgin and she is crazy in love with Dr. Herbert. At the opening of the film, we there's just a girl like tapping her foot in a jukebox for a long time. It, it's at a bar. He offers to give her a ride to a nightclub, and he kills her. He, uh, what does he do? Does he beat her with a rock or drown her in a creek or both? We find out that's actually the seventh victim of this serial killer. And eventually, Marcia finds out she is seemingly okay with it. But then just when he's about to turn himself in or set himself up in a sting, there's another black-gloved killer going around. And as far as law enforcement goes, it's all this same killer. So we got to figure out who the killer is. Oh, and he helps with the investigation. Even the first act of this movie is, I mean, there's things that just happen. Like, <clears throat> he, he comes home from being questioned by the police or talking to the police. And his wife says she loves him no matter what. And he has this thing and he's like, do you love me? Where? Here? Like points to her heart, points to her throat. And around the corner, there's the maid who's, like, going all over herself very vigorously, by the way. And it holds on her as she's, I'm just like, okay. <laughs> there's this other guy, John, who I don't think it'll say who he plays. But, I mean, he... He's a, a parking lot attendant who seems to be at every crime scene. So he kind of becomes the obvious red herring. But in this Jallo, it's kind of like the early six, like the late 60s, early Jallo. Where it's like, for the most part, we know that Dr. Herbert is the killer. But now all of a sudden, there's this other person. And he keeps showing up. This guy, John, he's also like the comic relief or just another weirdo. Like when he's in a police lineup, he says he was relieving himself in the bushes. The proof is still in the grass if you don't believe me. That's what he says. The black glove killer also kills this other girl in a phone booth. Marcia keeps having these dreams or visions of like the first dream which is in the main menu like a medieval dungeon where Dr. Herbert is like laughing maniacally and all the women are in chains and they're like laying there and it will like cut between them being clothed and not clothed and them all over each other then she has a another dream where it's like a red curtain room where now he has like a collar and chain she has one but her her niece uh, Joaquin I think her name was undoes her thing and then Marcia the niece and the maid all join in on each other while he's chained up and laughing and they go on for quite a while. And then there's like this whole midsection where John finds this opening of what looks like, it looks like he was in a park. There's like this opening that goes down like these stone stairs and there's these tunnels. So he's walking around and he comes to this metal door with holes and he looks through it and he sees the maid there 
with the black glove killer and I do like this see because I like how he's looking through different holes so that there's some obscuring and I could be wrong but this movie has things that changes like that it looks like the killer took a knife and put it somewhere <gasps> you know think uh, what have you done to Solange and then brings in a gas tank and turns it on and leaves so that when he gets in he has to leave because of the gas but then it turns out she, she's still alive and she wasn't stabbed there she was just given morphine to pass out and then the gas was turned on this movie doesn't really make sense uh, I took a lot of notes but I already took talked through most of uh, what I already put. Um, so yeah, there was the sting. Because he's going to turn himself in, but that's when the we first see the killer just as he's about to make his move. The uh, I think she's a, di a woman that runs a diner who is posing as the woman for the killer to get her because he calls the police and says the killer's going to strike here at this time she notices there was a knife left behind so she takes it the police know she took something but they don't know what or why so that she's killed it because she calls Dr. Herbert's house says I need to talk to Dr. Herbert I found something and he can tell the police which means she's going to die before she can talk to him. She's... It's like a whip with a long handle and a tiny whip where she's just kind of hit a little bit and then drowned in her tub. So then when the police go to question her about what she found, she's like naked on the ledge outside the bathroom window. So when the partner opens it, she falls... But we don't see her fall. The care, like he opens it, we see her go, and then it just cuts to her already on the ground. And I think that's all while the parking lot attendant is going through those tunnels, looks through the holes. Uh, And then there's the red curtain vision, which when she has that, she starts off like Barbara Steele, and then she gets more relaxed as she's brought into join. Uh, Herbert at one point throws black gloves uh, outside his car. The police find them, and they suspect it's the attendant who ditched the gloves because they think that's what the lady took from the sting operation that he killed her and got rid of him. So they go to find him, but of course he's down in those tunnels. Or that's when we see him start to go down because they're looking for him. But then he finds a door which takes him up into Dr. Herbert's house. And we see Herbert talking to another girl, or he's stalking her. Then eventually we see that he's given her a ride. I mean, I, I can stop and say spoilers here, but I mean, there is a twist. But the more you watch it, I, I think the more it's trying to make the audience kind of delirious with how much is changing. Uh, so I'm going to say spoilers here, but... Can I recommend this to everyone? No. Can I recommend this to even the most uh, casual of Jello fans? Maybe not. If you want to see just how sleazy Italian films can get, or even Jello can get, then maybe check it out. Just don't expect a very coherent film because that's where it really lacks. Uh, could tell you anything about the music. I don't remember a thing about it. 
The performances are all wild, especially at the end. Uh, I just don't have much to say about it. I mean, it's not in my bottom 10 or, I mean, it definitely has some, you know, problems with being coherent in some of the pacing, which I know the American version takes care of. But, yeah, just in general, I, I wasn't the biggest fan of it. And I know Paul Selle is known for making very wild, crazy, bonkers movies. But, yeah. It, I might just have to say this one just wasn't really for me. So, but with that, I'm going to get to spoilers, so... So as, as I should have said earlier, one of the first scenes is uh, we see that Dr. Herbert has this box in his office. So he goes in there, he locks it because he says he was going there to get his cigarettes. Marcia sees him, so when he leaves, she goes to unlock it. She finds a bloodstained shirt. And this is when he's talking to police the first time. So she suspects he's the killer of at least the first girl. So when he comes home, he gives her this card that says, you know, I'm an impotent fool, you're a virgin, you should, you know, I'm useless, you should, you don't deserve to be unhappy, you could start your life. She says, I'll love you no matter what or how. So, because he was starting to do this, because he was getting turned on by her, so then she says, you can do whatever you want to me. And he does get kind of violent, but she stays. And as you'll see with the twist at the end, that's what kicks off everything. Um, so let's see, where was I here? Oh yes, so then John, the parking lot attendant, he's walking around Dr. Herbert's house, he finds the knife, and he calls the police, saying, hey, I found the murder weapon, but I'm not telling you, like, where I am, and they keep letting this guy go, even though he keeps showing up at crime scenes, and known to be in the area of each one at the time of death. And while he's talking on the phone, he keeps trying to kill this fly while he's talking on the phone. I don't know if that's for humor or just a, a quirk they threw in there. But they got disconnected and they were able to trace it. And just at that time, Dr. Herbert gets home. There's a note on the door from... Uh, Joaquin say there's a man in the cellar. I locked him in there. We're out looking for you So he goes in he's gonna go investigate, but he doesn't want to kill him. So he empties his pistol He goes down in his cellar which has medieval torture devices There's a scuffle and He tells him and he also told the police over the phone that the girl in the phone booth was his girlfriend and he kind of had the idea it was the doctor the whole time. So, I guess that's why he was there. How we do that tunnel went there, I have no idea. So they get the scuffle, and they, first, he has a chain around Herbert, and he's like, trying to look strangled, but it's like this loose. And then same thing, he, he gets it around John's neck, and he gives a couple, like, It seemingly dies. But the police figure he was the killer, so they kind of cover up that he killed him, even though it looked like self defense. They say he must have slipped trying to escape the cellar. The maid is still alive, so I guess she did get stabbed there. So Herbert gives her a drug that will hopefully wake her up. That he goes out with police. So it's just Joaquin and 
Marcia that are there. And there's like one scene where they have this cord wrapped around the maid's leg. And they're like pulling on it while she's like touching herself. But then it's like in the next shot, they can't wake her up. She's just like laying there. She's slapping her, trying to wake her up. She can't wake up. Then there's this really weird, I have no idea what was going on scene, where there's a radio that's playing screaming. The lights go out, and both Denise and Marcia are being attacked by unseen men. Which, in fact, I don't know if I'll be able to, be able to find it in time, but there's a Italian poster in here that shows that scene. And I had no idea what was going on. They're, they're both being attacked. And then all of a sudden, the lights come back on. And they're both, like, laughing. Like, I, I thought that they must have got high off something. And they realized the radio is what's playing the screaming. And then they go upstairs and they see that the maid is gone. Herbert comes home. Every time the phone rings, Marcia answers it, but just screams no, or hello, as if no one's there. Yeah, see, it's, it's like that scene where they're being attacked with the lights out, but I guess it's not really happening. But then it turns out, which I didn't even know this was a Jello. I thought this was just an exploitation film. Then I was reading this, and it said it was a Jello. And up until the sting, I was like, how is this Jello? What direction is this going to go in? So then Herbert comes home. And again, she's answering the phone, screaming hello and no, I don't want to talk to you. And we see the maid is with police trying to call them. And apparently the police took the maid. So, I don't know how that happened. And then all of a sudden it uh, I should have I literally just turned the TV off to make this video. For some reason I didn't take notes on the last part of it. But the, the twist is is Marcia was the killer. Ever since that first night with the note and he got a little violent with her and she figured he was the killer of that first girl. She was the killer because she she killed the first girl because she wanted to take suspicion away from him. The niece was her accomplice. Uh, accomplice. And they know that since the maid is still alive and Marcy was the one that was down in that hidden room with the gas and the morphine that she'll be able to say that and that you know sh she'll be <laughs> she'll be found guilty and she said she did because she loved him so much and somehow and then the niece Oh, because she starts r running around like crazy and they end up on the roof. That's when the police show up. And that's when the niece tells her, like, you love him, but he's going to turn you over to the police. I can't see anyone take you away. I love you too much. He's turning you in right now. So then the niece starts attacking him, calling him a coward, and hitting him with that whip thing. Marcia tries to stop her and they end up down in the basement and then they both got like Barbara Steele wide eyes like the niece is like like they won't take you away I love you too much they, they can't and now she's strangling her with a loose chain but Herbert is walking through the same tunnel John went through and when the door opens it's the inspector and the parking lot attendant. Like he did really die, or I don't fucking know. And then when the 
police get inside, they find the that he's dead with some contraption stabbed in her. We didn't see that. They find Marcia with the chain around her neck. And two people are carrying her. And the camera just like zooms in on her like with her head down like she's dead. And it just fucking ends. And just I don't I I have the feeling that like Paul Selly was going for you know, if there's all this if it's not coherent or you think something's happening but then the next scene is completely different. I don't know if he was trying to cause just a delirious state of a film or try to make the audience feel that way. But, yeah, I... Yeah, this movie is just nuts. It's the, the only way I can uh, put it. I, I think I did put in a note that there was a good kill in here that I wanted to talk about. Uh, maybe not. I don't know, so yeah. The wife was the killer, and the niece was the accomplice. And by this point, they were both equally insane. I mean, by the time they get the maid up to the room, from that point on, the movie is just non-stop weirdness and <clears throat> like like when they had that cord wrapped around the maid's leg and they're like auditioning it like like pulling it tightening it and the maid's like laying there but then just like that she's just laying there out cold and how the parking lot tenant is there at the very end I mean they very easily could have said yeah he's dead but maybe they kept him alive or you know kept his state secret you know for further help of the investigation I don't know this movie's just weird I'm sure this wasn't a very good review it's because I don't know what to make of it the only thing I can do is describe what happens <laughs> but yeah th this was definitely a bizarre one as far as sleaziness goes it's going to be hard to top this because that level is high. I've heard Play Motel and Jallo of Venice are the two most sleazy Jallos that you'll ever see. We'll see. <laughs> but as of right now, it's this one. And yeah, uh, the only thing I can make sense of is he was just trying to create a delirious film. Because, like I said, that third act, I have no idea what was going on. I got the twist, but everything else that happened, like that lights out, being attacked, laughing, coming, lights coming back on, every, just a weird fucking movie. So, yeah, that's 1972's uh, uh, Delirium. Uh, I'll stick with Baba's 87 Delirium, but... That's this one. But anyway, stay tuned for more Italian horror and Jalo films. And I do have some Spanish ones I can get to. I've already done a couple Spanish Gialli, so maybe I'll start doing some of the Spanish uh, horror and exploitation films that I have. But anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Oh, oh, oh.